Tonight at 6 on TV2 News, a first look at the latest additions to the Aeronautics and Engineering Building. Our very own Lex Rady is here with the inside look. There still hasn't been a Speaker of the House chosen after Jim Jordan lost during the second vote. Would he push for a third one? Find out. Trump loyalist Sidney Powell pleaded guilty to breaching election systems in Georgia, what charges she is facing and where she could be in the future. And Swifty fans, get your headphones out because Taylor Swift just released new music. What new version she released and more as TV2 News starts right now. This is TV2 News. Good evening, Portage County. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Sydney Brown. And I'm Skylar Eddington. We begin our coverage with a closer look at Kent State's Aeronautics and Engineering Building expansion. Our reporter Lex Brady spoke to the dean of this school and has all the details. Hi, Lex. That's right. The College of Aeronautics and Engineering have expanded their building, and the grand opening is tomorrow. Here's the inside scoop. The Kent State Aeronautics and Space Engineering Building has recently expanded not only in student size, but its building size as well. For the last five years, the college has seen tremendous growth across all the programs, both on the aeronautics side as well as the engineering, with lots of opportunity, especially on the engineering side. So the other building just wasn't large enough, quite frankly. We needed more space. The expansion of the previous building didn't just provide space to fit the growing student population, but also brought in new technological opportunities. So now we have a whole series of labs that are dedicated to supporting the classroom teaching for design, as well as capstone design, as well as competition teams. In addition to the space for more labs and equipment, there's now space for students to collaborate with one another and professors. The other thing is just all these collaborative spaces that we've created that really help student learning. You will see quite often faculty sitting out in the student spaces, talking with the students, working with them. And the aeronautic and engineering students at the college are noticing all the advancements made for their learning. So when I found out that they were expanding the building, it made it gave me a clear sign of, oh, this is a school that really cares about their aeronautics program it showed me that this is a program I want to be a part of. Through these advancements, students of the college feel that their educational needs are being met and are confident it will help with their future careers. And all of the equipment that they're giving to the aeronautics program, it gives me a good sense of, ooh, this is a program that can further my education to where I want to go. Make sure to check out the grand opening of the building tomorrow. For TV2 News, this is Lex Rady. Thanks, Lex. It's a big weekend for Kent State with homecoming celebrations starting tomorrow with the International Homecoming Celebration. The event is free to all Kent State students, staff, and Kent community members. All attendees will receive a food passport to taste dishes from around the world while cultural performances are showcased throughout the night. The event is from 5 p.m. till 8 p.m. in the Student Center Ballroom. That's not the only event this weekend. Kent State's homecoming game is this Saturday, and there are many other events. Friday at 7.30 p.m. is the Kent homecoming kickoff, where students and families can watch fireworks. A few other events are the Flash Nation tailgate, Kiss on the K, and, of course, the homecoming parade that will begin at 10.30. Be sure to go to the Kent homecoming website to check out more events taking place. Good evening, Portage County. I'm your Thursday evening weatherman, Michael Neen, and here to tell you if anything is falling from the sky. Because right now, it uh, looks like some little water droplets are coming down. It's raining out. It's 60 degrees, but it feels like 59. Dew point is at 47 degrees with wind traveling south at around 8 miles per hour. Humidity is at 65% with visibility at a maximum of 10 miles. Now, as we take a look at the forecast uh, for tonight, uh, at 8 p.m., it will still be rainy. It'll be about 56 degrees. It'll be like that until midnight, where it'll reach a low of 54 degrees. And then it'll stop raining in the morning, but it will still be in the early 50s. So definitely bring a rain jacket. And, you know, it still could rain in the morning. But for, just to recap, uh, for tonight and tomorrow, it will be around 52 degrees. It'll be rainy all night. 
The wind will travel south at 11 miles per hour and the sun sets at 6.38 p.m. But that's all I've got for now. Stay tuned though because I'm thinking about previewing the statewide temperatures and the seven day forecast. Thank you so much, Michael. Down the road, the University of Akron has a food delivery service, but this is a six-wheeled robot. The robot is from the university's partnership with Starship Technology through their app and Aramark. The food delivery robots use AI learning to navigate campus, sidewalks, curbs, and avoid obstacles. Currently, students can order from Starbucks, Qdoba, Panda Express, Annie Ann's, and Freshens on the Starship app. An Amazon location in Ohio will be the first to transition their packaging from plastic to paper. The location is up in Euclid, Cleveland, where employees explain how the packaging will be way better material and easier to work with. Packages will now be packed in one of three ways, box, paper bag, or a padded option. However, some packages may still come in plastic if they were sent that way by the original owner. Gas prices are down 13 cents in Akron and 11 cents in Cleveland. The national average is now listed at $3.55 per gallon after dropping 11.3 cents. Nationally, America is reaching its lowest levels in six months. For Cleveland, the average of $3.19 a gallon is 44.1 cents cheaper than a month ago and 57.6 cents less than a year ago. With elections coming up, more and more people are wondering what the results are going to look like. Baldwin Wallace University held a poll that shows that many Ohio voters are planning to vote yes on issue one and two, which aim to protect abortion access and legalize marijuana. The poll showed that around 58% of Ohio voters plan to vote yes on issue one and 57% plan to approve issue two. Taxes on guns and safety devices could be dropped. Ohio lawmakers are considering cutting taxes related to both weapons safety measures and the weapons themselves. Ohioans would be able to purchase trigger locks, safes, and cases on tax-free. According to the Ohio Capital Journal, Sandy Hook Promise emphasized how safe storage could prevent accidental shootings and suicide. Both measures have held hearings with opponents and proponents. Jim Jordan announces he will stay in the race for House Speaker until a candidate is chosen. What this means for the House. The White House released their aid plans for Gaza in the West Bank amid the Israel war. Find out the Biden administration's plan in supporting the nation. Tomorrow's news leaders. Today's top stories. From an award-winning student newsroom. This is TV2 News, truly Portage County. Welcome back. The White House has still yet to find a replacement for Anthony Rhoda. Our reporter Dennis Farhani has more. That's right guys, Jim Jordan assured that he is still running for the speaker's gavel as the Ohio Republican faces a hefty battle to win over handouts, but is undergoing pressures from within the GOP conference to drop out. We made the pitch to um, members on the resolution as a way to lower the temperature and get back to work. Uh, we decided that wasn't where we're going to go. I'm still running for speaker and I plan to go to the floor uh, and get the votes and win this race. But I want to go talk with a, a few of my colleagues, particularly I want to talk with the 20 individuals who voted against me um, so that we can move forward and begin to work for the American people. Jordan stated the resolution to empower House Speaker Patrick McHenry is out and another floor vote is in. He did not comment if they were going to the floor today, but other House Republicans said those were his intentions. Jordan also mentioned that he wanted to speak with 20 of his Republican colleagues who voted against him. Representative McCarthy commented on making sure government is still running and having a resolution for Israel. I just think we need to make sure government still runs. And I think we should be having a resolution on the floor in support of Israel. I have a five-point plan to support Israel, but the question right now is you can't do anything until you elect a speaker, and apparently there's not enough votes to elect a speaker. McCarthy said he has a five-point plan to ensure Israel, but cannot do anything until a speaker is elected. Reporting for TV2 News, I'm Dennis Farahani. Thanks, Dennis. The U.S. State Department is warning all of its embassies and consulates to review their security as the war intensifies between Israeli forces and Hamas. Mike Valario has the full report. 
A deadly explosion rocking a Gaza neighborhood, not far from homes where children are playing. Outside of a hospital, mourners pray over the body bags of victims. The grim effects of war that's erupted in the Middle East captured on video. A war that the Israel Defense Forces say may not have an end in sight. This will not be short. And even if we'll have to expand the campaign in case another enemy gets involved, we'll know how to handle it. With fears that a humanitarian crisis is spiraling out of control in Gaza, the United States and the European Union are calling for Israel and Egypt to allow aid across the border. The Palestinian people are victims of Hamas too. And that is why I welcome your decision yesterday that you took to ensure that routes into Gaza will be opened. Now on the heels of a high stakes visit to the war torn Middle East, President Biden is slated to address the nation Thursday evening. To lay out uh, his view of this extraordinary uh, moment that we are in when it comes to our national security uh, and international stability with a, with a highlight uh, and a focus uh, obviously on the conflict in, in Israel and his visit uh, there yesterday, uh, as well as the ongoing conflict uh, in Ukraine. The U.S. Embassy in Beirut warning Americans in an updated security alert to fly out while commercial options are still available. And the president is pledging to get Americans and other civilians out of Gaza. We're going to get people out, but I'm not going to go any detail with you now. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. Former President Trump Supporter Sidney Powell pleaded guilty in the Georgia elections case. Powell admitted she had a role in breaching election systems in a rural Georgia county in 2021. Fulton County prosecutors are recommending six years probation for Powell. In return, Powell will testify in future trials, potentially even for the former presidents. She also has to write an apology letter to Georgia voters. After nearly two decades, we finally know what happened in the disappearance of Natalie Holloway, who went missing in Aruba. Here's what her mom has to say. All he's going to hear is that jail cell door slam to remind him he's a double murderer. So um, it feels very, I mean, that's... That's like a weight is lifting because we've sh we definitely came full circle to shift roles. In a plea deal, Haran Vondersloot, the longtime suspect in the case, finally confessed he murdered Natalie Holloway. The confession came after Vondersloot was sentenced for 20 years for extorting and defrauding Holloway's mother, offering to give up Natalie's remains location for $250,000. Vondersloot is currently serving 28 years in Peru for the murder of a Peruvian woman, but will now serve his 20-year U.S. sentence at the same time as a part of his plea deal. The number of UFOs being reported to the U.S. government is increasing. Officials say dozens of reports have been made and received in the months. Thousands more are expected in the near future. The majority of the reports turned out to be balloons or drones, but some require further investigation and might even be objects used to spy on the U.S. One reason for the increase in reports is the Federal Aviation Administration starting to provide information to the Pentagon. But keeping an eye on the sky in Kent is our own Michael Neenan. What do you think, Michael? Well, uh, sorry to say there's no UFOs on the forecast for today, but I can tell you what it's like around Ohio because going from west to east, Sandusky is at 61 degrees with Mansfield being the same. As we go east, Worcester is 63 degrees, Cleveland is 64, Canton is 63, Kent is also 63. In Youngstown, it is 64 degrees, and Ashley Buell on the lake is 64. Now let's take a look at the wider statewide temperatures. Lima is at 56 degrees, Dayton is 58, Cincinnati 59, Columbus 63, Athens 67, Steubenville is 65, and up in Akron, it's 64 degrees. Now let's take a look at seven day forecast. And yeah, there's gonna be uh, some rain over the weekend. It will get cloudy as the week goes on, and it will be mostly in the 50s and even up to the high 60s, but really expect some rainy, some really damp weather for the most part. Uh, but most of the rain will be concentrated in Friday and Saturday, mostly. But that is all the time I have for today. I'm Michael Neenan, and remember, if the weather is the worst news you've gotten today, 
then you're having a pretty good day so far. Let's get back to the news. Thank you, Michael. COVID-19's life-saving drug will cost more next year. The drug Paxlovid will, by Pfizer will be more than double in cost to nearly $1,400 per consumer before insurance. The antiviral drug will move from being an available free to everyone through the government purchases to a more traditional commercial marketplace for most patients at the end of this year. Those with commercial insurance are likely to face a copay. If you are a T-Mobile user, you might want to take a break from scrolling and take a look at your phone bill. The wireless carrier has been doing experiments where they automatically switch some customers to more expensive phone plans. This change affects those on older phone plans such as T-Mobile One, Simple Choice, and Magenta 55 Plus. But don't get too worried. If you would like to stay on your current plan, just call their customer service line. Also on the rise are Netflix subscriptions. The streaming service giant will now bring their least restrictive plan with 4K video to $13 per month, which is a $3 jump in price. People who don't mind being interrupted by ads won't see any change. They can still watch for $7. Their new pricing comes as Netflix reported a 9% growth in paid memberships to reach a whopping 247 million global subscribers. After receiving complaints, Delta Airlines is backtracking on a few changes they recently made to their Sky Miles loyalty program for frequent flyers. The adjustments will lower the spending threshold so frequent flyers can hit certain reward levels. Although they are making a few changes, Delta will still keep in place miles-based to spending-based transitions. You could step onto the pitch as Lionel Messi. We have the details about the new immersive Messi experience that takes AI experiences to new heights. And the Golden Flashes are about to take on the best soccer team in the conference. We'll find out what makes them so great after this. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. Welcome back. I hope you're ready to grab your cleats because out of Miami, a new immersive soccer exhibit surrounded around Lionel Messi's life is on the horizon. The organizers shared their plans to utilize 3D visuals and AI-generated elements to put you on the pitch as Messi. Fans can expect to participate in games physically and digitally out of Miami where he currently plays for Inner Miami CF. I love like immersive experiences. Mm -hmm. Dom, our sports reporter, can you tell us what you think about all this? Oh, I would love to take part in that personally. I would love to do anything that results in me being in the life of Lionel Messi. That would be awesome. But hello, friends, and welcome to your TV2 Sports Report. Like they said, I'm Dom O'Brien, and we're going to take a glance at the local scene and some big national storylines. So we're going to go first with KSU Soccer. The Kent State women's soccer team is playing their final home game tonight at 7 o'clock against Western Michigan University. The 8-5-2 Golden Flashes are coming off of a one-goal loss against Northern Illinois, which makes their third conference loss in the season. The Broncos have not lost a conference game this season, nor have they lost a game overall since the middle of September against Marquette. They will finish off the season playing at Toledo on Sunday and at Buffalo next Thursday. The gymnastics team just released their schedule for the 2023-2024 season. They finished 6-9 and nine at the end of last season and came in third place in the MAC championships. The full schedule can be found on their social media at Kent ST Gym. And a champion was finally crowned in the WNBA Finals last night, but the team is not necessarily a stranger to winning. The Las Vegas Aces became the first team in 21 years to repeat a championship after defeating the New York Liberty 70-69. A.J. Wilson scored a game-high 24 points and 16 rebounds, and guard Jackie Young added 16 points and 7 assists in the victory. Wilson was also named WNBA Finals MVP with the loss from the Liberty this City of New York has now not seen a championship in professional basketball since 1973 when the Knicks defeated the Lakers in five games. We're going to move over to the MLB. We have another playoff game coming at you. Jordan Alvarez for the Astros sending in a high fly deep ball. Looks like it's going to be gone. Nope. Leoti Tap. Tavares robbed that one right away from being a home run. Houston was already up by five at one point, and this extends it even more. Alvarez, a two RBI single, running in Altuve, and running in Martin Maldonado. 
and then here we see a double play to finish off the game as Texas, the Texas will still lead two to one, but the Astros are now taking a game back there. Now we're going to head over and see the preview for Jacksonville versus New Orleans. The Jacksonville Jaguars are going to take on the Saints tonight for Thursday night football. The Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence is expected to play tonight, even though he is nursing a sprained knee. The game will kick off tonight at 815 on Prime Video. And that's all we have for you tonight. But for more sports updates, whether it's near or far, we'll be here to give you all the coverage. I'm Dom O'Brien and let's head back to the news. Be sure to stick around to find out what this year's most popular Halloween costumes are. Riding on the high of a cruel summer with the Eras Tour, Taylor Swift is now giving fans even more content beyond the concert tour and the new concert film with the release of a live track of her single, Cruel Summer. Now fans can feel the adrenaline of the first full song of the Eras Tour, including Taylor's engaging commentary with the crowd. But don't expect her to go away just yet because next week, Taylor is dropping a re-recording of her new album, 1989. And Swifties, if you are planning on an original costume of dressing up as Taylor herself, you're in luck because you will not have one of the most used and popular costumes of the year. According to Google, Barbie, Princesses, and Spider-Man are all taking the top three spots on the list. Trailing closely behind are more traditional costumes such as a witch, cowboy, or a ninja. One costume that stood out from the top ten was a bunny, which I guess escaped its typical holiday of Easter. We have our panel of Swifties, I think, here tonight. Mm -hmm. So, is anybody going as Taylor? Or anyone? I am um, not. You know, I wish I thought about that before I dyed my hair brown. <laughs> but, you know, there's, that's what wigs are for. Sydney, <laughs> so I true. think you would be the perfect Taylor Okay, that's Swift. the biggest compliment. Thank you yes. so much. You would be speak now or fearless, you know? Like, I see that. I see real. that. I have a curly wand, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, th this is, stay tuned for that then, everything. So, yeah. Sydney's <laughs> going as Taylor Swift. <laughs> you know, it's a cruel summer for her. Exactly. exactly. There you go. Cruel fall, actually. Yeah. So real. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Any favorites? Costumes no. coming up? Do you guys have any fun Halloween plans? I will be watching The Great Pumpkin. And that's that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's all the time we have for you today. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. For updates on all these stories and more, visit our website. And follow us across social media at Kent Wired. I'm Dennis Farahani. I'm Lex Reedy. I'm Skylar Eddington. And I'm Sydney Brown. Have a great night, Portage County. This is Portage County's TV2, broadcasting from the campus of Kent State University. Streaming online at kentwired.com.